Hey, what is up guys? It's your voice speed here and recently I was playing a game as Annie Mage and it was funny I was doing really well. I had a bunch of kills no deaths, but I still didn't carry the game. I was actually much more under farm than the enemy carry and things were pretty weird. So I'm like, okay, what research can I do to up my early game and make sure that I can have a better time when I'm playing Annie Mage or any sort of carry in the early game that needs a good start. And so that's exactly what we'll be talking about here today. I broke down this game, I just watched it all in all myself. I got a lot of key points that you guys can implement into your game right away so that you can get more last hits, be a better carry player, and hopefully start gaining MMR right away. And I'd also like to let you guys know that I just made a full length replay review of a Terror Blade game I played over on the Game Leap website. It's not going to come to YouTube, so if you're interested in content like that, really, you guys know I, I, I try to give you the best information, and I do really believe in Game Leap, especially the videos I've been making as of late are very high quality, in-depth educational content that, uh, you know, it's a lot of fun to watch, and it's going to help you get to the next level. It's going to help you gain rank. All right, let's get into the video. The first one is an advanced play that probably none of you ever made or ever will make, but I hope you consider it. So what they did is they sent their Animage to the bottom lane to put down a Sentry Ward. Now, why would they do this? There's actually a couple main reasons. You're going to say, oh, Speed, it's just to block the camp. It's obvious. Well, yeah, that is the main reason. Okay, he, he wants to block the camp, but why not have Oracle do it, right? Why not send the Oracle to go do it? Well, the reason why he is doing it is, number one, he's a 310 movement speed hero. Oracle is 295, so he will get there significantly earlier. And if he gets caught out... He has a way to get out. If the enemy team happens to run up this hill because they know that VP is notorious for blocking this camp early into the game, or they just expect it, or they just happen to be there, the Oracle will guaranteed feed first blood. Animage won't. There's no way they could kill him at the rune unless they do some crazy perfect chain stun that frankly would be uh, almost impossible. And yeah, the sentry is actually really important, so I'd like to delve a bit more into that sentry. Anytime you're against a lane where you think it's generally losing, especially early on into the lane, you need to block it. For instance, if the lane is ever in a bad spot for Annie Mage, let's say it pushes up uh, all the way to this tier 1 tower and statics here, it's going to be very, very hard for him to actually contest the wave if the Slaughter and, and Sky are able to synergize together on him. And so you want to block this camp so that to the best of your ability, you keep the lane towards your tower and, and in a position where you can farm it. Now to get into the lane, you're going to notice he has a stick. This is for obvious reasons. He's against the Sky Wrath, Spam Spells, Slaughter, Spams his W a lot of the time. Nowadays, Slaughter tends to be taking his bash at level 1. Reason for that is Slaughter now does double damage against creeps with his bash, and so yeah, as long as you prep a bash, your auto attack will essentially do like 150 damage to a creep, and so you use that to secure range creeps primarily. Um, but yeah, getting into it, the first thing you'll notice is he actually blocked the wave under tower. Now this is fully intentional, this is definitely not a mistake, because uh, yeah, VP Nightfall is on VP. He doesn't just accidentally block uh, the wave under his tower. He's on Radiance, and anytime on Radiant, even if you block the wave basically even slightly, it will go under your tower. And so this is fully intentional. Now, let's see what he does when he blocks it under tower to make sure he gets all the CS besides being really good at last hitting. Number one, he's going to pull Creep Aggro almost instantly. At the time where the tower hits the melee creep twice, he pulls creep aggro. Now, I don't think this is an exact math, but sure, if you want to have the exact numbers, there you go. The tower hit the creep about twice, nearly twice, and then he pulled creep aggro, and this will, for some reason, for whatever reason, set up for the perfect last hit right here. There's no way either of these heroes could contest the CS, and that's exactly what he wants. Then, after that, that tower's going to aggro to this creep. He will once again pull creep aggro off ghost stick to here, so that they cannot contest this creep. Any good players will destroy your last hits under tower if you do not pull creep aggro. You will not get last hits under tower if you do not aggro. So please, aggro, aggro, aggro. That's what he does here. He gets really good timing, secures that CS as well, has quick recognition to this range creep, really easy to secure range creeps as anti mage because you can hit them a little bit earlier due to mana break, and then he finally gets this one as well. Really crazy. Four last hits under tower. Um, and that's something you just, you're going to have to practice. But in all reality, if he didn't do that, he would just get pressured. The Skywrath would auto attack him constantly. They would just spam concussive shot and bash on the Animage, and he would have a really hard time. The next thing that they do, which is a little bit advanced, but I think uh, still a really important thing to note, is the weight does push in, okay? So I talked about earlier how they don't want it here. 
But the thing is, like, obviously you're not just gonna, like, insta-die level 1. It's not that bad, okay? It's not good, because now it's really easy, or at least easier for Big Num and Ghost Stick, right, the Slaughter in the Sky, to contest his creeps and to bully him a little bit. But the reality is, Anime is still decent at level 1. You're a, a relatively high armor hero, right? You got 4 armor, good movement speed, and a good trading spell. So you're not terrible, right? You're definitely pretty good at trading, and you'll see uh, in a couple engagements here, he does actually hit Ghost Stick. This is a beautiful trade here. And the reason for that is Ghost Stick obviously, very obviously, has to go for the Rage Creep. He's got three Bash Charges, Nightfall probably knows that, and therefore he's going to hit him because Ghost Stick doesn't want to use the Bash on the Animage. He wants to use it for the Rage Creep because if he bashes Animage, Animage is just going to hit him a million times while he goes for the Rage Creep, and it's going to be a bit of a disaster for Ghost Stick. So trades like that, they might seem small, but those trades get you more last hits. And last hits are literally the only goal is Animage in the laning stage. You're almost never going to get kills, especially against a hero like Slardar. You're just not. And so that is huge. It's going to chip him down just so it's harder for Slardar to pressure him. Not necessarily for the fact that he wants to kill the guy, just to make it harder for Slardar to bully him later on. As then, if Slardar overcommits, maybe he can get the kill. The second thing I want to break down in this little clip is what King Slayer does. I know it's not like exactly what AM does, but... Guys, you're, if you're a support player, you have to be very aware of what you need to do. Number one, Kingslayer is here in the first place. When the wave pushes up, if Animage is alone, he cannot farm. He cannot farm. Now you might be saying, why doesn't Kingslayer go pull right here? Shouldn't he get the lane back? The problem is, is what I said. The Animage can't farm. And so if you go pull right now, the Animage will guaranteed lose the full wave. There's no way he can lane against Skyrath Slaughter alone. It is not going to happen. And so I love what they do. They kind of shove the lane in. Right, they, they now push up and then they both double contest. And the nice thing here is because the wave shoved under the tower, uh, they have extra creeps. And so it's a 2v2, but with extra creeps. And so like, th there's just so many things going on that makes this playable for Animage. On top of that, I like to secure Kingslayer is going to hit this range creep. Basically, even though it's easy for AM to secure range creeps, uh, it just makes it even easier if you have your support prep it. So it, especially if you don't have an Animage in your lane and you're a five player or you're a carry, you should try to do that. It's pretty important. The next thing I want to note here is that he actually auto attacks this third wave that comes back in. Yeah, he just starts hitting this melee creep essentially off cooldown. Obviously, he's not going to hit it here because he doesn't want to get it denied. But yeah, he completely pushes in the wave, literally auto attacks it to death. And I think the main reason for this is it essentially buys time for Oracle to pull. If right now he pushes in this lane, right? So he pushes in this lane, the Oracle can then go pull right? Because there's no creeps. Animage doesn't need help. And yeah, the next wave will spawn, but they obviously want to pull eventually. They want to try to get uh, Animage some free waves under the tower. And so that's what they do. Oracle goes to pull that uh, allows him to have a 1v1, which is not a good 1v1. <laughs> yeah, it's a horrible matchup. But still, they're able to get off this pull. Then he can pop a salve. And because of the pull, he gets a wave under tower. And you guys, are you starting to see what I'm saying? Why these players are so good? Why all these things matter? Every single decision they made is 100% intentional. Typically in pubs, people just walk around in circles. Yeah, they might have an idea that if the lane is shoved up, they need to pull. They don't conceptualize that maybe their carry literally cannot lane at all. And then the carry won't push the lane so that the support can pull. And even if the carry does push the lane so that the support can pull, the support won't know that they should pull. And then they just push the lane in and it's kind of a disaster because they push the lane in, they don't get the pull off, and then the lane's just stuck underneath the enemy's tower. And so, Really, maybe this is just also a bit of a misplay from Unique here. It looks like Skyrath wasn't able to contest the pull. I don't really know why. Uh, let's quickly go back on that. But yeah, so this is where he pushed it. Skyrath kind of walks over. Yeah, he was just late or he just didn't. Yeah, he kind of just was. Seems like he just wasn't aware enough. So definitely a bit of a misplay for Bignum because he has to contest this pull here. Uh, sure, he has this creep on him, which is hilarious. It's such a grief to Skyrath because you're a zero armor hero. But still, like, uh, yeah, it's just it's really important to note how important all of these things actually are and uh why vp honestly in my opinion just hardcore outplayed unique here it definitely seems like they're on another level and uh yeah it's something to consider in your games even me like by the way guys like all the things i learned from this you might be saying speed you must have known all this and like i'm surprised you don't win your lanes more honestly a lot of the things i'm teaching you right now i've heard before and like have seen before but i, I i'm even largely conceptualizing like to a greater extent on how I can use them just while making this video. And, and so all of this is like definitely super legit um, and stuff I'm I'm going to be implementing. This is not like some 3K strategy. It's like, this is what you need to do to crush. And now as the lane progressed, you'll notice he kind of just is really good at last inning as well. On top of the fact that he's made a really, uh, you know, an easy game for himself due to the decisions that he's made 
he's also just good at last hitting. I can't underestimate how important it is to simply just be good at hitting creeps. I mean, I know I, I know I stress this in all my videos, but please, it's even something I literally have to work on. Even in my DPC games, I've been noticing that I'm, I'm simply not up to par right now. And yeah, you just have to constantly be able to be a better last hitter and denier than your opponents. Otherwise, you're going to struggle. By the way, <laughs> this is hilarious. I I remember watching this and I, was, I literally laughed for a bit. I'm like, what the heck? My man ulti the slaughter to secure the range creep. <laughs> uh, which, you know, it's kind of funny, but like, it's kind of legit. I mean, AM ulti is so bad at level one. It's so bad at level one. And so... There's like niche scenarios where, yeah, maybe you get some good ulti at level one onto like a Skywrath or some Storm, but I mean, usually it's just not going to do much. Like, to be fair, right here, it would be good for him to, you know, be able to nuke right here. It would easily secure him a double kill. And so you could be like, yeah, he shouldn't have ulti and it almost killed his puck. But <laughs> on average, I'm not I'm not super mad about it. I think it's kind of funny and, and sort of legit. And then, yeah, at the nine minute mark, uh, the lane gets to the point where Slaughter hits level six. And even though Anti Mage is level eight, he cannot lane. Uh, on top of that, he got a broken vest. Item is so busted. It's just so busted. If if you get the broken the broken vest or possessed mask, you kind of can just jungle. Like previous to this patch or these neutral items, yeah, you couldn't. It, it was really bad for AM to jungle this early on into the game. It'd be so slow. But frankly, with chip vest and the regen, it gives you five HP regen, which is so high. Literally five HP regen, and and then the obviously the reflect damage as well. It is just it's ridiculous. I, I cannot put it lightly how important it is to ask your teammates for chipped vest on heroes like AM, heroes like Void, uh, heroes that don't necessarily farm like PAs, heroes that don't inherently farm jungle quickly. Chip vest just changes your game. It just really does. You'll notice here, 16 HP regen. I mean, come on. And on top of all this, he gets a 12 minute battle fury in an unfavorable matchup. Like really, Slaughter beats Animage. He does, but because of good lane manipulation and good last hitting, you combine those two things together and you get a 12 minute battle fury with treads, with treads, pretty nuts. All right, and as we move on to the mid game, really this video is going to be uh, more so like the first 10 minute centric, uh, 10, 12, but I, I, I think like the next thing you just want to watch is that he AFK farms. Like just keep this in mind, no matter how strong you are as any mage, your heroes are so bad at fighting. <laughs> Like, you really are. So for the most part, he's just going to be using Mantis split pushes, sees the Wraith King top, shifts into their top jungle, right? And, and this is what makes a good carry player. You got to know your timings. You do. And then you got to also be able to look at the map and say, okay, I see the Wraith King top. Wraith King, if Wraith King is going to bother to push a tower, he probably has teammates behind him. Sure, there are circumstances where the enemy team is a bunch of gods and they make some really cool bait play, but... All in all, uh, you're typically going to see a, a Wraith King top. If In pubs, if you see a carry hitting a tower, you can almost guarantee, unless you see the enemies somewhere else, you can almost guarantee that they have a bunch of people behind them. And um, yeah, that ends up being the case here. So he can continue to shift through the top jungle. Almost gets an AA kill. Unfortunately, AA got a haste. <laughs> gets the mid tower by himself. Continues to push through the mid wave. Sees the enemy team drop out of top, right? So they, they exit out of top wave. Looks for maybe an AA kill. Kind of rethinks it. I mean, it's super dangerous. They lost vision to the enemy team, but then they, he sees the Mars. So when you see the Mars, you can say, okay, they're probably not there. He also catches a glimpse of Skywrath and Wraith King mid. So he's like, okay, maybe it's just a free AA kill. He could also transition this into the bottom wave, which is a nice, uh, it's kind of a, a nice pattern of farm. Unfortunately, they never find the AA kill. AA has very good intuition and good positioning there. So he doesn't feed away a free kill. Then he's onto the mid wave, which honestly, this mid wave push was definitely a bit questionable. He has no Manta right now, so if he was to die, it would be now. But fortunately for him, he does have an Oracle on his team, and, and so it ends up being a really nice bait with the Oracle, uh, and therefore he lives through the burst, gets onto the Wraith King, burns out his mana, and uh, yeah, Wraith King obviously has the shard, but it's it's simply not enough. And yeah, the rest of the game ends up being really simple. He gets to his Scotty timing, which makes him practically unkillable for the enemy team. Uh, they, they obviously like fourth pick this AM in their game, and... So they know it's a really good AM game. They do have the Slaughter. The Slaughter was a last pick counter to the Animage. But, um, you know, frankly, if, if Animage gets farther enough ahead, Slaughter, well, it's still very annoying. It's, it, Slaughter doesn't do anything to AM alone. So you, you need a lot of synergy uh, to do anything, right? He has like a Blink Dagger right now. I mean, what is he going to do? Right? Basically, no attack speed, no damage. And so, yeah, it's a super free game for Animage. But the reality is, uh, if you made a couple bad decisions in 
or didn't play the landing stage right, or a couple of bad decisions in the mid game, right? Got got picked off a couple times, or took some unnecessary fights. He could easily lose this game. All of a sudden, the AA Skyrath could solo kill him. You think I'm kidding? You're probably like, AA Skyrath could solo kill him. What do you mean? They're magical damage here. It doesn't matter. They do so much damage that they could easily rip through an anti mage. The Slaughter Mars could kill him. You know, uh, all, all I'm saying is essentially he wouldn't be able to farm wherever he wants. Right? The 26 minute mark wouldn't necessarily mean you can go wherever you want, but because of the game state and how well he performed, it's a snowball effect. Dota's a snowball effect. The 10 minute mark, like how you play the, the first two minutes affects how the four minute mark is, and then that affects how the six minute mark is. And that's just a metaphor for life. If you think the decisions you don't make now impact your, your life 10 years down the line, I don't know. I don't know how you could think that way. But nonetheless, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. I'm off to go get some wings and pizza, and I'm out. Peace. And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website, where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.